This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in the Resurrection of Christ Church in St. Petersburg, a church that was officially consecrated in 1907. It is simply breathtaking. It's covered with more than 71,000 square feet of mosaics, which were created in a workshop right here in St. Petersburg. But due to the communist regime, the church was closed in 1930 and the big bells were melted down and done away with and plans were to completely demolish this church. But that plan was stopped by the events of World War II and this was turned into a morgue. At various times, it was used as a warehouse for potatoes and vegetables and roots. Then it was used as a warehouse for props from a local theater. This place literally fell into disrepair. It was nearly forgotten. In fact, it was under scaffolding for years and years and years. There was nearly an entire generation of people in St. Petersburg who never saw the exterior of this building. But in 1997, it reopened as a museum. Today, it's a working church. Behind me are the Holy Gates, that lead to the inner chancel of the high altar. These gates are encrusted, they're decorated, they're like treasures. In fact, this whole building is like a treasure. Wow. But when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it talks about you and me being the repository of God's greatest treasure. It says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that's you and me, we're earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us, which means God put his richest treasure not in buildings like this, but he put his treasure in me, he put it in you. The treasure is the riches of Christ, forgiveness, the blood of Jesus, the promises of God, the gift of the Holy Spirit. All of these things have been placed inside us. And in fact, when Paul writes that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that word treasure describes something so rich, so immense, that it is inexhaustible. God has placed his rich, immense, inexhaustible treasure inside us right here, right inside you. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. Thank you for letting me come right into your space. Today we're going to return to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, where we discover that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we're about to wrap up this series. We have two more parts in this series. And wow, the next two programs are simply going to be marvelous. But I want you to order the whole series, which is called You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. If you need a real boost for your self-image, this is the series you need because it will show you what is inside you. My friend, you are a walking sanctuary. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in this 10-part series, we go through all the verses in the New Testament about what God's grace did in our life when we got saved. God transformed you into a walking sanctuary. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, this comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And the study guide is just loaded with all the points, the principles, everything in these programs is also in the study guide. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called A Life Ablaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. This is a very substantial book. And the back of the book says, do you struggle to keep the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in your heart with the same fiery intensity as the early days of your walk with Jesus? Do you feel like only a few glowing embers remain and even those are growing cold? Or if you're on fire for God, how do you stay on fire? 
In this book, Rick Renner describes the spiritual fuel you must have to stay spiritually ablaze. Not one of these essential fuels is optional. All are necessary to fulfill your God-given purpose on this earth. My friend, this is a book you really need. It will help you stay ablaze for Jesus to the end of your life. So order yours today. Just go to renner.org to our store and you can order it right now. And please remember that when you need prayer, we are here for you. We really want to pray for you. Denise and I and our ministry team, we believe in the power of prayer. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. We believe that when we call out in faith, God moves. And if you need God to move in your life, in your marriage, in your health, in your kids, in your finances, in any area of your life, call us or send us an email and we will call out to God in faith with you and believe for God to show you amazing things. God wants to answer your prayer and we would love to pray with you. Well, I hope you have your Bible. Today you're going to need your Bible and we're going to return to our anchor verse, which is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. How I love this verse. Paul is writing to the Corinthians who really were behaving below themselves. They were not behaving in the holy way they should have been behaving. So Paul writes to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 with a sense of shock. He says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? When Paul begins with the word what, in Greek it is an exclamation. He is literally stunned at what they're doing and how they're behaving. And he says, what is this? What? Do you not understand? In fact, the King James Version says, know ye not. Well, in Greek it says, ouk oidate. The word ouk is the emphatic form of the word not. Oidate is from the word oida, which means to know, to perceive, or to comprehend. When you put all this together, Paul is saying, what is this? Have you not yet understood? Have you not gotten it yet? Have you not realized yet that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Even the word that is important in the Greek text. It is a Greek word hoti. It points to what Paul wants to say. It is his way of saying, listen to this. I want you to get this point. Do you not yet understand? Have you not yet comprehended that your body? And the word body that is used here is the word soma, which refers to the physical body. And my friend, this indeed is a miracle. God has transformed our physical bodies to be the receptacle, the container, or the temple of the Holy Spirit. How are you treating your body? Treat your body well, because your body is the dwelling place, or this verse says, it is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The word temple is the Greek word naos, and as I've told you in previous programs, that word naos describes a temple or a highly decorated shrine. It is the image of vaulted ceilings, marble, granite, gold, silver, highly decorated ornamentation. It is the most sacred innermost part of a temple, and the very word used in the Old Testament Septuagint to describe the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament. And now Paul, who knows what this word means, uses it to describe what God has transformed us to be. We have become the temple of the Holy Ghost right here inside our body. The Holy Spirit dwells. He is in me right now. He is in you if Jesus is the Lord of your life. The Holy Spirit moved in and he became a permanent resident in our life. And now we are walking sanctuaries. That is amazing. And that's why Paul says to the Corinthians, what? How can you behave like you're behaving? How can you do the low level things you're doing? Do you not yet understand that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Even the word in is important because in Greek it means in. It identifies the location. Is inside you, which you have of God. Ye have in Greek is a form of the word echo, which means to hold, to possess, or to contain. He's saying that we are the holders, the possessors, or the containers of this amazing temple which we have of God. The word of in Greek is the word apo, which means it came from God. This is not as a result of personal rehabilitation or reform. This is something we received of God. The Greek literally says from God. This is a work of God's grace in our lives. 
And he says, you are not your own. Well, every Greek reader that was listening and reading this verse knew that word naos, which described a highly decorated shrine or a temple filled with lavish ornamentations. That is the word which Paul uses when he describes our bodies as being the temple of the Holy Spirit. But when you come to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4, we find that when the grace of God touched us, it literally lavishly embellished us internally. And I'm going to show you this today, beginning in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, where Paul writes to the Corinthians, and he says, I thank my God always on your behalf. Now listen to this, for the grace of God, which is given you by Jesus Christ, and Paul here uses the word grace, and I want to stop for a moment and talk about the word grace. Many people today are talking about grace without understanding the historical roots of this word grace, and you have to understand that to really know what is the grace of God. The word grace is the Greek word charis. Now I'm going to read to you directly from the pages of my book called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit, where I write about the word grace. Listen to this. In the Greek language of the New Testament, the word grace is charis. That's the word used in this verse. Pages and pages could be written about the origins and the various nuisances of meaning contained in this word charis or the word grace. But this word charis, listen, denoted special power that was conferred upon an individual or a group of individuals by the gods. Once this charis, this grace, was conferred upon a person or a group of people, it imparted, imparted to them supernatural abilities. In other words, it enabled them to do what they could not normally or naturally do. In some secular literature from the early New Testament period, the word charis, this word grace, was even used to denote individuals who had been placed under a magic spell that transformed their personalities and imparted supernatural abilities to them. All of that is in this word grace, the Greek word charis. As used in secular Greek literature, this word charis, the Greek word grace, described a specific moment when an individual experienced a supernatural touch of the gods, always resulting in some type of outward evidence or visible manifestation. In this context, a person or group of people would never experience a supernatural impartation of charis, grace, without some kind of outward evidence. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, the word grace, the same word charis, is sometimes translated as the word favor because the individual who receives it has been supernaturally enabled as a result of receiving favor from God. So when we read of grace in the New Testament, we know it is referring to God graciously imparting a special touch that enables, empowers, and strengthens the recipients. Praise God. All of this applies to us. We have received a divine touch that has transformed us and given us abilities and graces to do what we could have never done before. This word grace, the Greek word charis, describes those that are enabled, empowered, and strengthened it is a touch of God that enhances personalities and imparts to people supernatural abilities, and it is always accompanied by some type of outward evidence or demonstration. Grace is never silent. Grace is never invisible. Of course, it produces inward change, but it always comes with outward evidence. It is never silent. It is never invisible. It always manifests in some visible, tangible way. Likewise, if you have been touched by God's grace, you should expect His grace to visibly show up in many areas of your life. That grace will empower you to have victory over sin. It will enable you to control your tongue. It will transform you as its influence changes your behavior. And by studying this word grace, particularly in this verse, we find a specific insight regarding this truth. When God's grace has been liberally poured out, it visibly shows up in the form of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to see in this verse today. All of that is in this word grace. My friends, grace is powerful. It is the supernatural touch of God 
that changes you. And I think it's so very important that in New Testament times, it was even used to carry the idea of a divine spell. Because when a person came under charis, under grace, they were transformed. They behaved differently. They thought differently. They could do things they previously could not do. And now Paul uses this word grace just like that in this verse. He says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace, the supernatural, empowering, transforming touch of God, which is given you by Christ Jesus. Then he says in verse 5, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. But notice in verse 5, Paul says that in everything. In Greek, it says in panty. The word pan is all-encompassing. It means everything. It could be translated all, but it has attached to it the little word T. It's not just pan, it's pan T. A better translation would be in every way. That word T means every little minute minuscule detail. So Paul is literally saying in every way, in everything, it is an all-encompassing phrase. There's not one part of your life that has not been affected by the grace of God in every way, in everything, even in the most minute, minuscule detail, you have been enriched by Him. Here we come to that lavish ornamentation which God has done inside us. Oh, this is so powerful. The word enriched is a form of the Greek word plotizo. This word plotizo shows up again and again when we read about God's work inside us, what God has done inside us. This word enriched, the Greek word platizo, describes wealth so great it cannot be tabulated. It is abundant wealth, vast wealth, extreme riches, incredible abundance, magnificent opulence, it is extravagant lavishness, and it was the very word used by Plato to say no one was richer than the legendary King Midas. Everything he touched turned to gold. And now we find the same word is used to describe what God's grace has done in us. Oh, that your eyes would be open, that you could see what is in you. You have in you wealth so magnificent it can never be tabulated. Lavishness, ornamentation, it is amazing what God has done inside you. He has inwardly adorned you by His grace and by the work of the Holy Spirit. But Paul goes on to say that in everything, in every way, in every minute, minuscule detail, you have been lavishly enriched by Him. Paul says in all utterance and in all knowledge. And now he begins to describe specific ornamentation that is in us. He mentions utterance and knowledge. The word utterance is the Greek word logos or a form of it. It describes all kinds of speech and here it refers to the vocal gifts of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, what are the vocal gifts of the Holy Spirit? Well, you can read about them in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but it would include the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. These are vocal gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said to the Corinthians, you have been lavishly ornamented, lavishly embellished internally with these amazing vocal gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then he adds, and in all knowledge. The word knowledge is a form of the Greek word gnosis. This word gnosis describes knowledge, but in this verse, it specifically refers to the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are knowledge gifts. This would include the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, discerning of spirits. And by the way, there's some overlap between the vocal gifts and the knowledge gifts. But Paul says the Corinthian church was internally adorned with these gifts. And it's not just true of them because God is not a respecter of persons. What He does for one of His children, He does for all of His children. You have the same gifts inside you. You may have never experienced them, but they are there. They are in you because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. My friend, the Holy Spirit is the possessor of all of those gifts. And if He's in you, then all of those gifts are inside you. It is amazing what is inside you. But then Paul says in verse 6, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The word confirmed is the Greek word bibio, which means to authenticate, to verify, to establish, or to make concrete. And here's what we find out. When the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in you and they are operating, 
they establish in you the testimony of Christ. Let me give you an illustration. When I was growing up in my denominational church, I never saw anyone healed. When I read about the healing works of Jesus in the Gospels, to me it was like a fairy tale because I had never seen that before. It was just a fairy tale. It was nearly something of fiction that happened 2,000 years ago. But when I saw the gift of healing operate right in front of me, suddenly the Jesus of the Gospels stepped off of those pages into my life. I saw Jesus and it authenticated to me the testimony that Jesus Christ is a healer. My friend, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are essential because they bring to us the reality of Jesus Christ. Jesus being a prophet, I never understood that. To me, it was just something that happened 2,000 years ago until I experienced the gift of prophecy. And when I saw the gift of prophecy in operation, suddenly who Jesus is as a prophet became a reality to me because I experienced the gift of prophecy. This is why we must have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says in this verse that when they operate in us and through us, it really brings to us, it authenticates to us the testimony of who Jesus is. And I know that you want to know Jesus better and better. But then he says in verse 7, so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 8, who shall confirm you unto the end the word end is a form of the Greek word telos. It describes maturity. It describes completion. It also describes the climax of an event. And here Paul tells us it is God's intention for these lavish spiritual embellishments, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate in us, to authenticate to us who Jesus is, to bring to us a new understanding of Jesus, to bring us telos into a place of maturity and that these gifts are to operate in the church all the way to the end, to the climax of the church age, he says, that until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how long the gifts of the Holy Spirit are to operate in the church and inside you. But all of this began in verse 4 when Paul describes the grace of God, the marvelous touch of Jesus Christ that lavishly, internally embellished us. We are filled with with spiritual ornamentation, my friend. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, a walking sanctuary. That is who I am, and that is who you are. Quit putting yourself down. You need to embrace who you are. You, my friend, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what, have you not gotten it yet? Do you not understand yet that your body, your very human body, just touch it. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have in you, which you hold, you have, you possess. It came from God, and you're not your own. And that's why we need to behave like holy people. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about in the next program. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. Someone asked the important question, how do I resist temptation? Most people say, oh God, I'm so tempted, what should I do? But there's a very easy way for you to get away from temptation. And the answer is found in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, which says that God is faithful when you are tempted to provide a way for you to escape. And the word escape in Greek is the word ek basis. The word ek means out, the word basis means to step. When you put the two words together, it means to walk out, which means the same shoes you walked into that temptation with are the same shoes that you can turn around and walk out of that temptation. And if you're in a place where you're being tempted, get up and walk out of there. It's just that easy. If your temptation is to overeat, get out of the kitchen. If your temptation is to gossip, get out of that situation. Use your feet and walk out. That is your way to escape. Do you really know what the Bible means when it says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? My friend, you really are the dwelling place for the Spirit of God. And that is amazing and powerful. In this fabulous 10-part series, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Rick Renner unwraps all the intricacies of what the Bible means when it declares that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God put forth His best work when you were born again. 
and then God placed his greatest treasure deep inside you. In this series, you'll learn you are God's masterpiece. You are a repository of God's greatest treasure. You are sealed and guaranteed by God's Spirit. You are filled with the riches of Christ. This life-transforming 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the book, A Life Ablaze. In this book, Rick lays out everything you need to live an intimate, uncompromising life and stay on fire with the Holy Spirit's power for years to come. You can do it, but you need to know how, and that is what you'll discover in this timely book. Order your copy today because it will help you throw the right fuels into your fire to get you burning again. Order your copy of A Life Ablaze today for just $22. Don't miss this special offer. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the book A Life Ablaze. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. I am so glad that you've let me be with you today. It's really a privilege that you let me come right into your space. And today I've been talking to you about you being the temple of the Holy Spirit. My friend, you are not who you used to be. God's grace touched you and transformed you. And today you are a walking sanctuary. In fact, just say that. I am a walking sanctuary. That is who you are because the Holy Spirit lives in you. And I want you to have my whole series called You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. We walk through all the verses in the Holy Spirit that deals with what God did in us when we got saved. The Holy Spirit moved inside, my friends. We have in us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we really are a walking sanctuary. Wow. And this series comes with a study guide. We're also offering you right now my book called A Life Ablaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. Not starting on fire, living on fire. God wants you to be on fire to the end of your life, and you can be, and this book will help you know how to be a life ablaze. But let me pray for you. Father, I am so blessed that today we could be together and that we could see how you have lavishly embellished us on the inside. Thank you, Lord, that our spiritual interiors are filled with power and grace and glory. Lord, help us to embrace who you have made us to be and to walk in a way that is worthy of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I can hardly wait to get back here tomorrow. We're going to continue, but until then... Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.